Welcome to the Top Business Leader Show, powered by Rise 25 Media. We feature top founders, executives, and business leaders from all over the world. Chad Franzen here, co-host of the Top Business Leaders Show, where we feature CEOs, entrepreneurs, and top leaders in the business world. This episode is brought to you by Rise25. We help B2B businesses reach their dream relationships and connect with more clients, referrals, and strategic partnerships, and get ROI through Done For You podcasts. If you have a B2B business and want to build great relationships, there's no better way to do it than to profile the people and companies you admire most on your podcast. To learn more, go to rise25.com or email us at support at rise25.com. Heather Holmes is the CEO and founder of Publicity for Good, a renowned PR professional. She's a re renowned PR professional dedicated to making a positive impact on the world with a passion for helping individuals and brands amplify their stories. Heather has built Publicity for Good into a powerhouse agency known for its innovative approach to PR. Heather's leadership and expertise have led uh, to the agency generating millions of impressions for clients in various media outlets, including ABC, CBS News, and more. Beyond her professional accomplishments, she's also a wife and mother and uh, living off the land and embodying the values of sustainability and community that she promotes through her work. Heather, it's great to have you today. How are you? Yeah, I'm really excited to be here and really help people scale their business. And I'm a mom. I have two under two and one on the way. And I don't have a babysitter today, so this is the life we live working from home. Um, but I love being here. I'm the founder of Publicity for Good, and we partner with purpose-driven brands and people to grow their impact in community by really getting in the media. So uh, I, I would love to hear all, all about that. But first, tell me about this living off the land. What does that mean? Yeah. So we um, we have 22 acres and we're slowly building a homestead. Uh, when we found out that we were pregnant, we were like, it's going to, we need to build fast. So we ended up building um, a house that has two acres um, and we have our own chickens. So we get eggs every morning. We have a garden. We're not fully self-sufficient. Yes, we still go to farmer's markets and the grocery stores, but very intentional. We buy our groceries at bulk. Um, and we're just trying to eat, you know, as local as possible. Wow, that is, that is awesome. How many different types of um, crops would you, are you able to enjoy? Oh my gosh, I don't even count. But <laughs> I think it's a good reminder because sometimes in business, um, it's easy to lose faith or forget about doing the boring things every day. Mm -hmm. Right? Like doing outreach or just doing the things that keep the lights you know, running. And I think growing crops or flowers is such an amazing reminder that if you don't water them every day, they're going to die. Right. So like we have to do the boring things every day and scaling it isn't sexy. It's very boring. It's doing the same thing every single day. Um, and it's such a good reminder. So, how much work, how much work does that take? It should take more. And like, I'm trying to save my plants right now because I forgot about them. Um, but I try to have it be a part of my morning routine, go out, uh, go barefoot, drink coffee and like water the garden. Um, I am not a pro. I am not 10 hours a week in the garden. Uh, very minimal. Uh, where we're at right now is just full force building a business, scaling and then being parents. So um you know, gardening, you know, doesn't necessarily get as much time as it should. But, um, you know, you you learn the basics, you figure it out, and we'll have amazing, you know, food grow. Our kale from last year is still, you know, here. So it's fun. So let's get back to um, publicity for good. Um, take me through kind of your journey up till the point where you started publicity for good. What does what your background kind of look like? So I worked at an advertising agency as a publicist for three and a half years. I was a communication major um, and it was the kind of environment where you had to secure media interviews every week for clients. You didn't go home if you didn't meet your goal, right? So I got really good at relationship building. And I remember I had my planner and I would take notes of how many people I called, how many emailed, how many interviews I booked. Then, you know, I look and it's been like two years and I'm booking 35 interviews a week. And I fell in love 
with publicity and the fact that you can reach new audiences and really tell your story. And I've seen business owners scale with not even having a website. It's just their story, your story. Um, and that's what's really powerful is that PR allows you to grow your community. You build a network, you share your story and you scale. So. So you, you did that for three and a half years. And then um, what inspired you to start Publicity for Good? Yeah. So my dad and uncle were really successful entrepreneurs in real estate and they both passed away. Um, so really leaving a legacy was the only thing that I thought I could do. Um, but when you work at an ad agency, it's very long hours, 15 hour days. But it's not like you're getting up at five, you're getting your work done. You're taking a little break there's no flow of life and work. It's just like, you're there nonstop. Right. And I dreamed of being able to build something that made a difference that made a difference for my family, for clients. But, you know, like there would be a little bit more flexibility, you know, like as long as I met my metrics, I could get up at five and work. And then if I had to do something midday for the kids, I could, right. Like that's really what drived me to start the company. Um, we started the agency um, eight years ago. Uh, we're now a full-time team of 30, uh, full-time in the U.S., Brazil, and Philippines. Um, our first million dollar a year was the year of the pandemic. And literally for three and a half years, we lived full-time in our Airstream, my husband and I. And uh, when you don't have a lot and you're in a very little space, you scale. But then also when the pandemic happened, um, our business literally like decreased by 50% right away. And it was scary. So mm -hmm. we had to scale, we had to hustle. Um, and we were able to because everything was closed, there were no distractions, and we had to scale to survive and keep the team. So how, how has given some of the how long is how, how long has publicity for good been in operation then? Obviously, since so before the pandemic. Eight years. Eight years. Eight years. Mm -hmm. How has your vision for publicity for good kind of evolved during that time? Yeah. So my first goal was to be a million dollar company by the time I was 30. Um, and that happened. Um, now it's way bigger. And that I want a company that's around for 50 plus years, right? Like we're now a team of 30. I'm excited about how we can pay our team. Um, like we think about now being a top agency, buying other companies, uh, being a hundred million dollar company. Uh, really having an impact in our community, um, being able to give more away financially, right? Um, but then to big picture, like bring on a CEO to run the company so I can focus on what I love and everything as well. Um, but I definitely couldn't do what I do without like the infrastructure and the team, for sure. How do you balance kind of the desire to be, you know, a hundred million dollar company with positively impacting the community? Can those two things go hand in hand? Yeah, because, you know, um, I did an intensive at Georgetown, the Fund for American Studies, um, and it really focused on conscious capitalism and businesses that give back. And how do you do that? And prior to that, I really wanted to go into like volunteerism or like working for a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. um, I I fell in love with PR and realized I could reach 10 million of people by one TV segment. And then I also realized, too, um the more money you make, the bigger impact you can have, the more people you feed or the more people you can hire and the more you teach them the fish and they can feed their family. So, um, you know, I think you can do both at the same time. What are some um, notable successes that Publicity for Good has achieved? Would you say that you're most proud of maybe during your time? Yeah. Um, so we partner with over 300 amazing brands. Um, all of our brands are purpose-driven. So um, purpose-driven entrepreneurs, nonprofits, businesses, um, and then brands like consumers, brands, food and beverage. But um, there was a popcorn brand um, that hired people. The majority of their employees had a disability. And it was this amazing gourmet popcorn brand. And they brought us on January 1st. And we had this big awareness day. January 19th was National Popcorn Day. New client, you're figuring things out. We had 19 days to execute. Um, that day, we had like four TV segments. We had like 50 live links. They ranked on Google. They had the highest amount of sales ever. Um, and it was really exciting because it was such a monumental um, experience for them from a sales and impact perspective. Uh, but it was so fun to be a part of it. 
And for us, like every one we get, we want to do more or, you know, we just get a live link. We send it to a producer to follow up. So we keep the momentum going. And it was so cool to be part, be a part of a campaign um, that had impact from a ranking on Google perspective, a sales perspective. It was fun. So how do you... what? I mean, without giving away your secrets, people, obviously, you want people to come to you because you can do it. How do you kind of, um, are you leveraging relationships when you are able to get this, you know, national attention for for a brand that maybe not many people have ever heard of? What's, what's the key to to like getting that attention? Absolutely relationships. I mean, there's some people we've worked with for years, so it's a lot of it looking at our media Rolodex, but a lot of it too is relevancy. A lot of times I see people pitch the media and I write for a bunch of publications and I get a pitch and there's no relevancy. So you have to bridge the gap between your story. Why does it matter? What's the solution? What's happening in the news right now that makes your story relevant? Okay, well, Mother's Day is coming up. It's small business week right now, holidays, um, and or what's trending in the news. People forget about that in the eyes of the media. They care about how does this fit into their story? They care about impressions. So you have to be strategic with your pitch and not be salesy and ensure that it inspires, educates, or, you know, is relevant to what's going on in the news, like in this moment. Would you say that reporters or producers or whoever you're pitching your story to are usually open to story ideas? It's just a matter of you making it sure, making sure that they, that you keep their interest. They are, but they also get like 400 emails a day. Mm. So they're very overwhelmed. So you would definitely have to be um, relevant and you have to keep a relationship with them. And again, it's a lot of times based on relevancy. It piqued their interest. It's a cause or something that they're interested in. Um, or it could be like a last minute segment and they need a guest. So what do you think are the most critical elements of a successful PR campaign? Um, I think knowing where you want to go. Number one, um, knowing how you're integrating, going to integrate it into your marketing campaign, um, having a clear call to action, um, and really understanding why your story matters and know, like, have clarity, like, what do you, where do you want to go? Do you want to go local, right? Do you want to go national? Do you want to go regional? Do you want to go to podcasts? Um, and before you even get to the Today Show or Good Morning America, you need local media. They're going to ask you for a clip of where you've been. So it's a building process. It's mm. a snowball effect. National media, if the story is right, could take six months. So you've got to start somewhere. And if you have a launch, you really probably need to start nine days prior because you need to get your messaging. You need to get your assets. You need everything in place to ensure that you have what you need for the media. Because when they say yes or say, let's go, you need to have your resources in place and you have to be responsive. Do you have clients where you where you can clearly see why their story matters, but they they don't grasp it yet? Yes and no. Um, we do a lot of the building out the story or building the heart of the brand or the purpose driven component. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd say that's really where we um, shine. But uh, when a client or a brand is not involved in the process or they're not willing to do the work, meaning that um, they get booked on this podcast or they get booked on a local radio show and they overlook it because it's not big enough or it's not national media. That's, you know, the worst thing that can be done because one, when you're national media, you don't want to be a one hit wonder and you absolutely have to practice. So people who show up to the most amount of interviews are open-minded know that a miracle could happen from every interview. Like I've heard people that have been on small podcasts and they brought in $50,000 like in a contract, um, you know, or someone's on a radio show, it's in a small town, but their wife is an investor. Like you can't take everything for face value. And from a marketing perspective, your community doesn't know how big a show is. They don't care, right? But it's like omnipresence, like while wow, you're on this podcast, while wow, you're on this article. Where I see brands really successful and entrepreneurs is then they, they get the press, they keep doing it monthly, and they integrate it into their marketing, right? They send the article to their potential clients. They use it to position you as a thought leader. Um, that's really where I see brands and people scale from PR. 
Can PR play a role in driving social change? It absolutely can. Um, and also, too, you know, there's a lot of people who have not heard about your message or your mission. So it's a really great way to build your community. Um, and I think now more than ever, it's OK. I think we need to be honest. I think we just need to step into who we are. But if there's a mission or something that's important to you, you know, I think you should talk about it, right? Like now if it's not authentic and it's not an alignment and you're kind of talking about it because everyone else is, that's not authentic. But if there's a cause or a mission that means something to you, you should talk about it. Um, we have gotten so many interviews before for a founder who, you know, was raising awareness about epilepsy for her daughter or celiac disease. And that wasn't her business, but that's her heart story. And it still grew her business because it's thought leadership. It's the CEO. It doesn't need to be very transactional where, you know, you are a company that helps people with podcasting. And you're just talking about podcasting because local media wants to hear your story. Mm. So that's really where pull, pulling back the onion and looking about who you are as a person and why you're an entrepreneur and tips for entrepreneurship really help. Are there any common misconceptions maybe that people have about PR? Yes. Um, let's see. Um, that their story isn't good enough, that they have to have all these assets in place, um, that it's not trackable. You can't make money from PR. Um, what else? That they have to have a big landing page. Like I've seen people get national media with just an Instagram account. So really how you get more media is your story and the relationships. What's our, uh, what have been, well, you talked about, a, you've talked about a few during the the pandemic. I was going to ask you, what are, what are some of the biggest challenges that you've faced uh, while building publicity for good? Yeah. I mean, it could be right now trying to figure out running a business and being a mom, right? But like, mm -hmm kind of step into it and it's just you and it's your part of your story and it's a, a connection point to others. Um, what else? Um, managing expectations, right? Like yeah. this is what PR is. This is how it's going to help your business. Uh, people who have been the, the most successful have done this. Um, and sometimes people can view it as transactional, but it's really not right. Um, what are other challenges? Um, I mean, those would I would say would be the biggest. I mean, I run my company with my husband, um, and we've learned through that as well, and that's fun. It's mm -hmm. not easy, but you think about it, you have you know two people working towards the same goal to better our clients, to better our team, and it's like we're working towards the same mission, you know, like day in and day out, he's working on the business. I'm working on the business. We're taking care of the kids, right? Like that's exciting. So upon starting publicity for good, and maybe in your first year or two or whatever, even now, um, you obviously were very confident and were very good at PR, <laughs> but, uh, uh, did you, what did you, what did you learn kind of like taking on the, like a whole business rather than just doing PR, like maybe you were doing in your job? So I did sales outreach when I was at the agency. So I was mm -hmm. already doing that. Um, I would say probably contract negotiation or like in the past, if someone would be like, if someone was would negotiate services, I would do it. Or if someone was like, you know what, Chad, like I'm going to work with you, but I can't pay you for 60 days. Right. Mm -hmm. I would just do it. And then it would be stressful because I have a whole team to pay and everything too. So learning to say no when you need to say no. And, and not feeling guilty about that. Are um, industry trends and best practices constantly changing in public relations? Public relations. They're all they're always changing. Um, when the pandemic happened, definitely, like all the media companies consolidated. So media outlets aren't really in New York City as much. They just work from home. Um, and there's a lot of digital um, companies and independent companies too. And there's Rumble and all those entities as well. So what, uh, what advice would you give to business owners who are concerned about social responsibility and looking to incorporate that into their brands? Yeah. Um, I would say you really have to dig deep on what causes me the most to you. And then look for local partnerships around that. Again, that alignment piece is key. 
So like what causes do you care about? And then from there, look for partners or nonprofits to partner with. You can give a percentage of your money to a nonprofit, really any of those things. I have one more. I have one more question for you, but first tell me uh, how people can find out more about publicity for good. Yeah. So you can find me on Instagram um, at Heather DeSantis, or you can go to publicityforgood.com as well. Um, we write for a, public a bunch of publications. We're always happy to feature you. Um, and then also to like, if anyone has questions, we always do free discovery calls just to strategize with you. If you uh, if you had a friend or a, fr a friend's kid or somebody who was just graduating from college with a PR degree and they had this great idea for an agency, what advice would you give them um, that they wouldn't have learned in school and could only have learned from the experience that you've had? Yeah, you have to work in an agency first, I think. Like an agency is provides you really great experience with multiple clients and personalities and expectations. So... I think it's great to start on an agency. Okay, awesome. Hey, uh, Heather, it's been great to talk to you today. Thanks so much for your time and for all of your insights. Really appreciate it. Thanks for listening to the Top Business Leaders Show, powered by Rise25. Visit rise25.com to check out more episodes of the show and to learn more about how you can start your own podcast.